sriracha sauce. They're good. Yeah, they're good. They're real good. Well, you know, if our board meetings go three hours, you kind of have to be prepared. Yeah. What's up? Free what? Stream is live. Thank you. All right, stream is live, guys. The stream is live right now. No. She was a good entertainer. I know, I threw 50 yeah. Huh. yeah. Yeah, I paid for my team. I paid for my team's golf. Yep. Couldn't afford you. <laughs> I figured you're. I figured uh, John was there, and did you play with Ken? Right. Last year? I was gonna say you couldn't afford me because right, you, I'm a you're a twosome. Yes. You're a plus one. You love golf. Oh, oh yeah. Team, and, so, yeah, that's like our and I'm like, that's that's really yeah. 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 that's really 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 I played with uh, Dennis and Andy and New Mike. And Dennis, when he hits the drive, when he cr he crushes the ball. Oh wow! I'm like, oh, to be that young again and just swing so hard. <laughs> no back problems. No, no None. problems. Oh, but just remember that two strokes of every hole is for putting. Mm-hmm. Practice your putting. Yep, yep. Oh, I haven't yeah. golfed in years, but it's I, a short game is where you make up your. your that's strokes. where you. That's where you will beat people is on the putting green. And where I would always lose would be chipping up onto the putting green. <laughs> Eight strokes. <laughs> How was your birthday? That was Hey, that's that's a lot. 
this year so I had to you know, like, put the things back to the ocean. Yeah. It's a shovel. Yeah, that's good. Let me say, it's great that there's these between now and It's seven o'clock. It's seven. It's seven. Seven o'clock. Thank you, Dana. All right, board. We're going to get started here. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the September 14th meeting of the Conestoga Valley School Board. I'd like to welcome everyone that's here, anyone that's watching online or anyone else in the building. And notice that uh, all of us are in attendance. If you could all please join me with uh, to the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, if I board could have a motion to approve our agenda tonight. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we have an agenda. Uh, comments, Dr. Z, tonight? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I'm gonna go ahead and um, kind of walk us through where we are right now and, and how we got to the, the high school actually closing this week. So what goes into the decision-making process to close a school? And I, I just want everybody to know because we have received a number of emails and phone calls and like why did we close and what did we do and, and how did we do it? Well, it actually started when we prepared to reopen the school. And so there was a number of proactive protocols put in place within the schools, like contact tracing and things like that. We evaluated the cases that did occur. These are cases that are positive and those cases that are probable. Per the Department of Health and PDE, we are to treat probable cases as actual cases. So we did definitely consult with the experts and we considered both the health, safety, and education of our students and staff. And then ultimately, a decision had to be made. This started on the evening, and I'm talking evening, late evening of September 7th. We were informed of our first positive case. Um, we immediately began contact tracing protocol. We did contact Department of Health at their 24-7 phone number. Um, but then we took it upon ourselves to begin the contact tracing because there was not an immediate response from DOH. We identified 19 individuals to be quarantined, and they were quarantined due to being close contacts that is within six feet or more for 15 minutes. On the 9th, which was a Wednesday, the second day back in school, our second positive case was reported late in the afternoon. Again, we did contact tracing, and 10 additional individuals were forced to quarantine. On the 10th, on Thursday, the third case was reported that morning. We also identified one probable case that Thursday morning. So by Thursday morning, we had three positive cases and one probable case. The contact tracing identified six new individuals to quarantine. What we did then as a pandemic team is we organized the data. We looked at the positive cases, the probable cases, and the quarantine cases. We broke it down. We broke down the interaction between all of them and then we reviewed the Department of Ed and Department of Health guidelines. And I'm gonna go ahead and, and put those up real quick because they are really used to drive what we did moving forward. So you have to look at the, le the level of community transmission in the county and we are in Lancaster County as a moderate school. When you look at the number of cases with COVID within a 14 day period, we are definitely within the two to four cases. <coughs> so then when you go down to moderate, 
It is to close school for five to seven days, clean areas. Public health will direct close contacts to quarantine. Well, in the absence of DOH getting back to us, we did contact LGH, who is our local, and worked with them for the quarantine procedures. So we started the quarantine procedures immediately. We also contacted Dr. Pat Moreno. He's our school physician, and he's also a liaison through the Penn Medicine LGH um, COVID group. That group, as, as you remember, it's in the absence of our countywide health system, our countywide health organization. The 16 school districts and the IU formed a consortium with Penn Medicine and LGH. And fortunately for us, Dr. Moreno is a member of that consortium. During that conversation, he commended our efforts in contact tracing and agreed that those efforts helped mitigate the spread of the virus. Now we question whether our efforts would allow us to waive the PDE DOH guidelines of closing the school. Again, he complimented our efforts, but explained that the virus could still be spread despite our best efforts. But in order to reset the count, he did reaffirm that we must follow the PDE DOH guidelines. We'll be able to separate those positive tests that occurred before and during the closure with those that occur after. So in essence, we're gonna have a clean slate coming back on the 22nd. We will continue to, to conduct contact tracing as appropriate. And as a reminder, the, if you are quarantined, that return time to school does supersede the school closing window. I think the title in this slide says it all. Yes, it's frustrating. And everything about this pandemic has been frustrating since March. Uh, first and foremost, though, we'd like to acknowledge the pain, suffering, and loss of life that has brought, and we do empathize with all those affected. And we also recognize the impact this pandemic has had on all aspects of our lives, our financial well-being, our social, emotional health, and our, definitely our ability to have things be normal. From a school standpoint, it's also frustrating. We continue to do the best we can. Our students and staff are, are faithfully wearing the masks and face coverings, they're washing hands, they're social distancing as best as possible. And uh, I want a little shout out to Nancy Lopez, our nurse coordinator for her in-depth contact tracing that she initiated. Despite all that, positive cases were reported that met the criteria to the thresholds that led to our school being closed this week. That's only our high school. And while it appeared that we had all, there were some areas, grades, and activities within the school that didn't seem to be affected, in order to best protect from the traced virus spread, the board approved the administration's recommendation to close the high school based upon DOH PDE guidelines that were also affirmed by Penn Medicine and the LGH consortium, as well as our own district physician. So what are we doing now? Well, students aren't in, but teachers are instructing at the high school um, online. The building continues to be cleaned. Our cafeteria staff has provided breakfasts and lunches that are being picked up at a grab and go option right outside the main office. And all extracurricular activities for high school students have been suspended and are being rescheduled as appropriate. School will reopen on Tuesday, September 22nd. So where do we go from here? We continue to practice mitigating strategies both inside and outside of school. The three that you've heard over and over again, wear a mask or face covering, practice social distancing and wash your hands frequently. We need to support each other. COVID is not a blame virus. We must work together in order to maintain our health and safety of the individuals, the community and the schools. Continue to practice grace, understanding, flexibility and patience. And as always, we are CV strong. Mr. President, that was just a quick synopsis, but I just wanted to put that on the record of what we did to where we got to where we are right now. Sure. Any other comments? That's all, Mr. President. All Thank right. you. I do have to mention, I, I forgot to say this as we got started, that uh, as a board, we did have an executive session on Thursday the 10th. I just needed to mention that, so that can go there. So just to let everybody know that we had that. Um, any board comments tonight? All right, this is our first time in our meeting for public comments. Are there any public that are here in the building that would like to, to make any comments?
Nope. All right. All right. So uh, moving on to our action discussion, Dr. Z, do you have any comments about your superintendent's report? Superintendent's report uh, reflects the, the teachers that we talked about, the one-year teachers that are helping out to keep the numbers at the elementary levels low due to the large influx of elementary CVVA students. So that takes up a majority of the superintendent's report. All right. Uh, board, with that, I need a motion to approve our superintendent's report tonight. Second. All right. Roll call starting with Phil. Aye. 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 And aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. All That's right. Me. Policy reviews. This is Phyllis. All right, Phyllis. All right, we have uh, two policies to review briefly this evening. Um, 702, which is our gifts, grants, bequests, memorials, um, and actually naming rights is also um, in this policy. Um, you can see we made a couple of minor changes uh, to the policy. Obviously, when we accept gifts, uh, we do want to make sure um, that they are logged into our fixed assets um, at, if they're appropriate for that. Um, and then felt um, with the monetary gifts um, to make sure to confirm um, that we're going to do that in accordance with uh, school board policy 609, which is our investment policy. Um, other than that, um, there are some, some title changes um, on this policy as well. Um, but before uh, we move off of this policy and uh, move to the next one, um, I will say that um, you know that our process when we look at these policies is to go back to the school boards association, try to get some sample policies from some other districts and, and use those um, kind of as a sounding board or a benchmark to see um, what ideas might be in other policies that are not in ours. And um, it, sometimes we walk that fine line, Mrs. Graff will tell you, between um, trying to make sure we have a policy that has enough detail in it, but not so much, um, that we really bleed into guidelines um, a, as part of the policy and kind of do that separately. So I will say, in looking at the other policies from some of the other districts um, in this area, uh, there are some policies that do have uh, some more detail as far as um, not so much the gifts and grants that we were pretty consistent there, um, but when you get into the memorials, uh, some of those policies really got into some detail about um, the types of memorials and what isn't specifically what is and isn't appropriate. Um, we chose not to bring that to you um, in any further detail than is already in the policy, um, simply because it, it seemed as if it got almost too specific, and we kind of put ourselves in a corner that if something were to come up, we would have a hard time maneuvering. Um, the other one is, as I mentioned, the naming rights, um, which really should probably be added to the title of this policy. Again, as we looked at some of the other policies uh, from some of the other sample districts, um, much more detail about naming rights. Um, you, m some of you have been here longer than I have, um, so this may seem uh, maybe a silly question, but um, I, I do want to draw it to your attention that, you know, in our view, the board has the authority and has, at least at CV, taken responsibility for the naming rights of, of any piece of property um, at CV. Um, some districts have moved to really, again, detailing what can be named, can't be named, why it can be named. Um, we have not, in my view, had a need for that, um, but just want to bring it up because it is different. Um, some districts do that. Uh, so because we've you know, had some board changeover, if you're more comfortable with something that has a little bit more detail um, than the very brief uh, wording that we have in our policy, um, this would be the time to add it in. So again, we're not recommending that because I think what we have is, is simple and works for us, uh, but wanting it to still bring it to your attention so that if in either of those areas you feel like what's in the policy is not enough, we can certainly pull some of those samples, even attach them um, to board docs so that you can look at them on your own and give us some guidance if you feel like this policy isn't adequate. I'd like to request this policy be put aside. Okay. Um, I recognized it when I read it, but I'm sure I recognized it as a policy that I read before and that we changed. I don't think it is the 
most recent thing we had specifically uh, in the area of the memorials. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that the policy that we we're, have we're looking here. looking at is not the one. It's one I remember, but I remember changing it. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can so go I'd back like and. I'd put this aside to try to see if we sure. can't find the more up-to-date one. Of course, this one is dated 1993. Uh, and yeah, we can certainly. I, and I, mean, we I, have both and I know we've looked at it at least once since I've been on the board. Okay. Well, and we may have looked at it and not no, made mean, changes to it, but you're it saying we did make changes once. to it. Absolutely. Okay. We, had, we had some issues, and well, let me explain this very briefly. The time to look at this policy is not when you are in the grief of having lost a student. Correct. And every time we had a problem, we didn't realize it until we had that unhappy situation. Okay. So we finally came to a point where we could look at it more fairly and more objectively. And I am absolutely sure we changed it. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. We can put it aside and try to go back and dig. Are there, is there anything else that the board wants to see? You just want to go back and start there, or do you want to see some of these other samples? As far as the naming rights, I think that could be put in guidelines. Okay. We, we agreed, but thought it prudent to ask you. Okay. Well, we won't... Um, put additional policies um, or sample policies up then, but we'll go back and see um, what may have happened. Um, when we went back, obviously, this is the one that, you know, that we had um, in board docs, so uh, we will do that. All right, uh, second one is um, sanitation and recycling. Uh, and again, um, not a huge amount of changes to this policy either, um, but some updates that uh, we did want to make. Um, the purpose somehow ended up, um, it's a two-part policy, um, but ended up in, in two different spots. So we thought to condense that all into one purpose section um, made a little bit more sense than having it um, in two different places. Uh, and then when you get into the implementation is where you're going to see some of the changes. Um, I had Ken help me with this because we uh, are obviously um, under some different recycling guidelines. If you haven't sort of been following uh, how recycling happens, there are things that we used to recycle that we can no longer recycle. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that that list uh, matched up. Um, and then again, in our review from some other policies, uh, we saw some language um, that we wanted to add um, about making sure um, that the uh, facilities are inspected, um, calling out um, the authority or the responsibility um, for the cleanliness of the buildings, um, and then making sure that the general conditions of the classroom, if they're not um, where they should be, um, that the teachers let us know so that we can make sure that we address that. Um, so that, that last sentence is not intended for them to do the cleaning. It's intended for them uh, to make sure if the condition of the classroom isn't up to par um, that we're notified of that and can work to address it, whatever it may be. Uh, so any uh, comments on this policy? Yeah, uh, considering the amount of paper school goes through, have we looked into places where we could recycle the white paper? So... Ken, I don't know if you want to jump in here, but we um, use Eagle Disposal, um, who is our recycling partner. Um, you probably need, I'll step aside if you want to use this microphone. Yeah, good evening. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we use Eagle, and I've checked with many of the other recycling companies in the area, and nobody is taking the paper. Um, whether it be newspaper, white paper, copy paper, any of that, no, nobody takes the paper. The only place I know that will actually accept paper is the recycling center um, in Lancaster City right next to Burl. Mm -hmm. They will still take paper, um, for now anyway. Uh, I don't know how long that will continue with them. Um, they also still take magazines and, and newspapers. Yes, but, but again, <clears throat> limitations on, you know. So then we have to look at, we'd actually have to collect it ourselves and then take that in on a probably a weekly basis just due to how much you know paper we go through. Um, so we have to look at the, the time value in that. Yeah, recycling has really changed since, uh, since China, it, who it takes most of our recycling, has changed what, what they'll accept. Um, they, they used to allow for uh, 
a lot a lot more waste in their product now they want everything to be clean and they will reject and then resend back um, if they won't if they won't take it so that's why recycling costs and scrap value has dropped and plummeted and um, so yeah there's just there's no outlet for it so recycling centers are packed and loaded if you go up past an effort of goods there in Akron area I mean, they're they're just mounted up with product in their buildings so yeah unfortunately that's that's a huge one that you know we go through but you know with hopefully with more emails and the, the ability to scan and do those kind of things electronic documents so uh, that that helps with that aspect Thanks. Anything else on this policy? All right. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Phyllis. All right, Ken. I think this is you shouldn't have you shouldn't have gone to sit so quickly. <laughs> That's okay. I need the exercise. So, um, we had gotten in proposals on the one. Um, so the middle school is is probably the simpler of the two. There's an area of wall. It's the the gymnasium and then the auxiliary gym attached to it. Well, there's a, there's a difference in height there. So there is a a section of wall that runs at length. That's about 50 feet in length. Uh, we've been having some issues with uh, water uh, penetrations there um, with between the caulking and the finish itself. That gets the, most of the sun, so it's it's getting beat on most of the time. Uh, so had a consultant come out to look at it specialist in that IFAS product some people may have know it as drive it is a it's kind of its brand name it goes by IFAS is the the, the standard name um, so this is to reapply recalk the joints uh, dig all that old stuff out fix any of the damaged areas the cracks the dings um, bird holes at times so we find that uh, sometimes the uh, woodpeckers like to to make the holes and then the uh, sparrows or starlings like to use those holes to create birds nests so really can't make it up so so this is a cost to uh, <coughs> recoat and resurface that <coughs> that section of the wall in the gymnasium so. could you explain the part of that bid that mentions plus items not included um, they're just clarifying that they're they're not including those items okay. and is this yeah. in the budget uh, it is this is actually much less than what we had <clears throat> had really originally we were going to do more and, and recoat the entire thing but we really narrowed it down to where the problem area was mm -hmm. and then look to to address uh, all the other areas when we do a renovation to the building so does that mean this is below what was budgeted uh, it is very much so yeah I think our original number was in the in the 40s yeah, for this so. 46 or 47 I it was I'll, I'll get this one in Leola confused that way because the numbers are pretty close and then the other one um, is a is a little bit more work with Leola uh, we have an area that really needs to re, be redone on the north side of the building um, on some classrooms there is actually a picture of it uh, down further uh, keep going uh, keep going it's uh, there you go <clears throat> that section above that roof area so if we get a driving rain it pushes in through that and it unfortunately comes into the classrooms below so we we tend to lose some ceiling tiles there so this is a, an area we want to to fix this this is also an area we have some bird holes around the building that are to be repaired as well so those are broken out in a, in a separate cost so with this one um, we got we had three contractors only unfortunately only two submitted bids uh, but if we take the the paramount con contracting and their two alternates to patch the low bird holes and the and the high bird holes uh, that puts us at uh, just under 25,000 at 24,912 which actually puts us under prevailing wage rates as well so so that's another cost cost savings factor there yeah uh, this, I believe, we had budgeted in uh, in a forty-two to forty-six thousand range. Yeah. Any questions for Ken Board? 
If not, these will appear on our consent agenda for next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ken. All right, is Matt around? Oh. All right. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, we're reviewing two this evening. Uh, one is a no cost change order to uh, the district had Steve Booth review some planning beds in the northwest portion of the property. And he asked that we would revise some of the um, proposed planning in that small bed. And Lobar came back with a no cost change order to um, revise the original scope to what he was what he would prefer to have there <clears throat> so I don't know if anybody has any questions on that <clears throat> the other change order is regarding um, relocation of the mosaic that was at the cafeteria at Brownstown Elementary School uh, the hope was to be able to relocate that mosaic and possibly put it in another location uh, but there was always a fear that we were not going to be able to get it off the wall. Uh, the difference in cost of the $5,000 was two hours of labor for Lobar to try to figure out, uh, the general contractor to try to figure out how to get the mosaic off the wall without damaging it and being able to relocate it, which was part of their scope of work. Uh, Ken also asked them to salvage a few uh, important items of that mosaic, but unfortunately we were just not able to save the mosaic and, and be able to move it. So the $5,000 was, was an alternate bid number, which they honored at minus the two hours of labor to try to work with, try to being able to move it and salvage a few things that Ken requested. So um, that's credit for $4,903.50. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions regarding that? Okay, that's it. Thank you. I think Mark's taking care of this one. Hmm? Mark's going to take care of this okay, one. Okay, Mark. Yeah. Good evening, board members. Mark Karowski with KNW. Uh, here tonight to discuss change order number 41. Um, summary of this item. And maybe it might help to have a visual. If you scroll down, I think there's a plan view that might be of some help here. So on Brownstown, this is in the southeast corner of the existing building where we had a building addition, which I believe was predominantly for some mechanical space. Um, there were some discrepancies between the, the existing floor elevation of the building extended through that uh, building addition relative to the grades outside the building. The, Bid documents have been prepared to try and preserve as much of that existing paving as we possibly could to keep that cost down. During construction, we had a conversation while well, the four doors that are associated with that building addition, the grade drop coming out those doors was not desirable to put a stair or a ramp or something to keep that kind of con uh, concise up against the building, which meant removing a fair amount of that existing paving, I think in total about 424 square yards. Um, so that meant a change order increase to demolish existing paving, provide additional stone, provide additional paving um, to basically feather those grades out further towards the end of the existing paved area. You'll see also some nominal, we added a few bollards relative to uh, existing gas meter in that area, I'm sorry, new gas meter and the uh, propane tanks. That nets out with, there was actually a deduct for work that had been included in that area that was gonna be to do some minor amounts of um, milling and a very small amount of new paving that comes out as a deduct the net impact with the increased cost is a total change order add of thirteen thousand twenty three dollars and eight cents happy to answer any questions you may have about that item do i understand this work's already been done uh i don't know that it has no. i'm sorry the bollards have been installed but the, the rest of the work has not been done and 
I don't understand construction that well, so I need to ask, was this a design problem or was this something that couldn't be foreseen? So I guess I'd characterize it as a coordination question that, you know, at the time of construction, we understood the intent, or I'm sorry, of bidding. Um, the intent was to preserve as much of that existing paving as possible, um, which would have left some steeper slopes uh, at those doors, which was not desirable for the type of equipment that might be coming in and out of those doors. Um, if that had been the case during design, these costs would have been included. It's, it's not rework. It's work that would have been part of the bid package. It's just now being added during construction. I think to answer your question, it's not an error. If anything, you could characterize, I guess, maybe as an omission that says, well, it's work that would have been in the bid documents. Either way, the district was going to pay for this work because it's new paving. Um, but it wasn't included. It was a coordination question. Does that answer your question, Idet? Sort of, yes. Okay. Any other questions? All right, again, board, these change orders will be on consent agenda. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. All right, Phyllis. So the next item that you have before you is a, uh, an engagement letter with Apple, Yoast, and Z. Um, we are engaging them uh, because uh, they're, we're in tax assessment appeal season, um, and there's an appeal that came through that we were notified by Barley Snyder that they have a conflict because they're representing the other side. Um, thought it might be a little bit easier um, since we kind of have this um, grouping of, of uh, lawyers that we use uh, to get someone else to take the case on. So I did contact McNeese, Wallace, and Nurek. They actually also have a conflict with the other side. Um, so in talking um, with Bob Frankhauser, um, he suggested um, Bob Hallinger at uh, Apple, Houston Z. And so I contacted, I was in communication um, with Bob um, Hallinger. He sent me um, this letter and we're asking you um, to approve it next week. Uh, so that um, we can pay him to represent us uh, through this uh, tax assessment appeal. I'll take any questions that you have on it. All right. No? Makes thank sense? You, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Dina, any comments? Anything you'd like to say? Good evening. So uh, what we have here is the athletic event spectator procedures and considerations that the superintendents from the public schools in the Lancaster Lebanon League discussed and put together and agreed upon. Um, a couple of the things that I added were just mainly um, some of the more procedural things when we do have events um, and especially uh, events in the stadium where things can be a little more regulated so we want to have face coverings on um, entering and exiting the facility um, we will be keeping the the visiting team spectators and the home team spectators separate so we will um, have them on two different sides of the stadium and we will have um, some barriers so that the visiting team they will be entering through one gate and staying on the visiting side and the home spectators will be entering through another gate and staying on the home side um, we want to to be able to do that just to um, reduce the amount of contact between crowds and between crowds from other areas we will also be having some signage that will um, denote where the where spectators will sit we will measure to make sure that they that we are um, reinforcing the, the social distance. We will have sign for uh, signs from face coverings upon entering and exiting the facilities. Um, and as you you probably read, I mean, you saw all the other all the other um, procedures there at indoor events. It's a 25 person limit, so there will not be spectators at all. Um, outdoor events, we can have up to 250 people, but that also includes all of the game personnel and the players from both teams. Um, 
football, as you can see by the, by the nature of the number of the participants, there will be very limited spectators. So in order for us to allow for our, our own parents to see their children play, we will not be um, permitting visiting spectators. Um, so obviously that will uh, be the case when we are on our away games, um, our, our parents will not be able to, to go to the away games, but they will be able to see them at home, which actually works out a little better for us because um, we have five home games and two away games. So they actually get to see us a little bit more here this year. Um, do you have any questions about this? Dr. Z, anything to add that I may have missed? No, right now there's a, a bill sitting on the governor's desk, so this may change again. But, no. but kudos for, to Dina for staying on top of this. I, I guess that would have been my only comment. That let's, I know that you're, you're dealing with a lot of things, and if this, if this goes through and he can't veto, or he can veto and then can't veto because all that, I don't know any of that, mm -hmm. but that you guys are already prepared to have those conversations and are talking about the details that will end up inevitably changing this. It would, and, and like this, um, the superintendents are getting together, so it's a Lancaster Lebanon decision sure. because it's too hard or too easy to say, yeah, but right. they're doing this, and how come we're not doing that if we are consistent across the board? So as long as those conversations are beginning to happen at least ahead of time a little bit so that it's not like we're right. behind the eight ball when something may change. So Right. Oh, yeah. We talk about stuff <laughs> all, every day. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I just had a quick question. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry sure. to bother you. I know I've sent you a oh, thousand no, no emails. Problem. Just for this week with the practices and stuff for the, the school at the high school, how does that affect the only reason why I'm, the youth <coughs> practices? Will they have practice this week or will they not because the campus is closed? I'm just right. I'm getting I mean, a thousand it, questions. As far so. as I was concerned, we were still allowing them to have those, those practices and games. Um, the youth, yeah, they don't. I think we were more concerned with our own students okay. coming into the school and gathering outside the school on campuses, and we wanted to try to separate those gatherings, as Dr. Z explained earlier, to kind of start anew, start fresh, um, where fine. the quarantines would be over and all that would happen. Okay. So, you got it. But yeah. with this, so yes, you'll be able to observe the youth. Right. Like no, saying, I was just, so I was just he, question. My question was practice. Could week. they have it? Because yeah. the high school was closed, the campus yes. is closed. We are allowing them to then, even though the campus is closed, to have youth practices youth on practice. the field. Is what right. I That's correct. Because the, the closure was for this high school students only. Okay. That's why I just wanted to verify. I just thought if we were, okay, I'll right. stop talking. Thank no, you. no, that's fine. No. So youth, <laughs> youth sports are on. Okay. Yep. Just like our junior high. So, good. Thank you. All right, board, you have in front of us uh, the agenda for the 21st, which is next week. Um, you can see that. This is the second time in our meeting now for public comments. Is there any comments? Mike, was there no one there? No Okay. All right. Then moving on uh, to board matters. Um, with one of the things that was brought to my attention was that... Um, this, yeah, this was missed. Uh, the Lancaster Lebanon Joint Authority Board used to have Mr. Maines when he was on the board as our representative to the Joint Authority. Um, I guess in the next, probably between now and the next week, we'll have to have a discussion or if anyone would like to um, take this responsibility, I bet. Does it have to be a board member? Well, that's a good question. It does not. It does not? Okay. So if Mr. Maines is willing to continue to serve, we could just leave things alone? Okay. I can reach out to Mr. Maines and see. So we'll do that first, and then I'll bring back to that. I'll bring this back to the board if Mr. Maines does not want to continue. If he does, so I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. Okay. If he does not, what does it consist of? What, you know, what is that person who serves on that? John, do you know more, a little bit more about this? Correctly, they do. Um, they take care of land holdings for the authority. That's pretty much what they do. Okay. Okay. Thanks. 
All right. Well, like I said, the first thing I'll do is I'll check with Mr. Maines to see if he wants to continue on in that role. If not, I'll bring it back to the board, and maybe we'll have some other people in the community that we may want to ask or someone from the board. So stay tuned for that one, board. Um, then, uh, board, we need to just briefly discuss here about our board opening and our board vacancy. Dr. Z, could you help me out um, and yes, sir. pass these out to the board members? Board, what you're going to be receiving from Dr. Z is uh, the summary of what we, uh, the summary of all our responses. What I did, just so the public knows, uh, we received applications for the new board position that, to fill the vacancy of Ms. Reed leaving. Um, each board member got the applications. Each board member received the applications, looked through them. I requested of them to give me their top three or four. And in doing so, and in doing so, I compiled um, a list. I gave point values to each associated position. So uh, you can see on, the, on your sheet there, first place, your first choice was four points, and so on and so forth. So, uh, looking at the list of all the people that we receive applicants for, um, going down, I say there's, there's two tied with 10 points board, so um, barring any uh, discussion from the board or any discussion from the board, my recommendation is, as we talked about, bringing applicants in on Thursday to, to interview them. I would recommend that we bring uh, Mr. Fisher in, Ms. Hershey, Ms. Catcher, and Ms. Whitaker in for interviews, since those are the top four uh, point getters, to say the least. Any comments from the board about this? I think that makes sense. All right. Then one of the things that I would also like to bring up, just this is for discussion a little bit here. We used to, board, interview each person individually. And in talking with our solicitor, Mr. Frank Hauser, about our process of how we interview and all this kinds, he threw an idea out at me that he's used, uh, that, that he's been aware of that, and recommended to other districts, was to have all the candidates in at one time, sitting together. Uh, he, said, he said that it went very, very well. It went, um, it was fairly seamless. It actually went quicker. Um, not that this needs to be the most expedited thing we do, but he said uh, each applicant was given the opportunity to answer like the next question in line first, so there wasn't always like number one gets one, number two gets, and so he kind of went through it that way. He said, uh, I think his, he said he worked with Manheim Township in doing this, not that that means anything, but he said it worked very well. So we can do it the way we normally do it, where we schedule them out and they come in in half an hour increments, or we can try something new. I don't care. It's up to us as a board how we want to do it. So, has there been a problem with our past procedure? No. I've participated in that kind of panel, and quite frankly, I like. I'd rather stay with the individual because sometimes um, this is someone that we're going to work very closely with. Sure. And I think sometimes, from in the, in the past, our interviews have. Uh, go in slightly different directions for different applicants. Okay. So we get more of a feel of, of who, they, who are. they are. Sure. That's fine. I just wanted to put it out there. Um, so I know I said this to you before, board. Um, our interviews will be on Thursday, um, starting here at the district office. Since there's four of them, board, what time suits you best to, to start? Do we want to go 7 o'clock? So, I'm sorry, Todd. No, I am interested in knowing a little bit more about your option you presented. Um, so they're all in the same room. What they, what I was, the way it was explained to me is they all say we, say we have our meeting at 7. Like we have, they all come in at 7. They all have, we give them the questions. We have the questions like we normally had. They don't have them. We have them just like we normally do. Mm -hmm. And say, say it's, just for example, it's, it's Phil, Mike, Diane, and you are the four candidates. Question one would start, first be answered by Phil, and then question one would be answered by Mike, then Diane, then you. Then question two would be answered first by Mike, then Diane, you, and Phil. Question three then would be first answered by Diane, and so on and so forth like that. Um, 
the reason Mr. Frankhauser said it worked well for them was because if sometimes if, if similar answers, I don't know, he said that there could be times where a board member would go, oh, wow, that was a really good idea and responds like the candidates could respond almost to each other in their interactions. Um, so that's, it was just an idea. It was a thought. He told me it worked well for them. So I thought, well, that was interesting. So I thought I would at least bring it up whether we chose to go that direction or not. I would be open to trying that. Is that something that has to, we have to approve, or is that just something we can do Thursday think, night? Because, well, well we I need think to, we, we should know in advance we need to what we're going to do. Because, we need to decide because we're going to let them know when they're coming. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm open to either, but I, I'm not opposed to trying something new to see how it works. I'm with John. I, yeah, something new would not phase me. I think if it's not broke, don't fix it. Stay with what we've done. I'm not opposed to it. I, I could do either. I can see the, the benefits of, of both. So I don't know if it works in particular. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I mean, I'm, I really am fine either way. I think the, um, sometimes collaboration and camaraderie happens when you're in a room with more people and it might help people be more, a little bit more relaxed and but once again I haven't I've never done it like that so I I just think it might be kind of interesting to try it well as I said I've, I've done it that way and it doesn't make you feel more relaxed it feels <laughs> more competitive I think it definitely would feel more competitive but um Maybe we need some competition. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to trying it, but I'm, I could go either way. So it sounds like it's up to you, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, uh, what do you think? Did you? In Mike's indifferent. All right, so we have a bunch of indifference and two don't. All right, so uh, given that Idet is the only one that has tried this process and has not felt comfortable with it. I've been dropped. <laughs> oh, it's all your fault. <laughs> Dr. Z, comments from you using it at Elko. Um, we did both ways uh, up at Elko, and what you found was that when they're all sitting in the same room, you could see the differences of personalities and depth of answers, because even if you were the third one, and the first two people answered the question, if you were the strongest candidate, your answer is going to be different from the other three. Sometimes the fourth person just says, you know what, that was a great answer. I don't think I could beat that answer. So you see the interaction of people, and there is a, a competitive side to it for sure. So they, they, they really try their best to put their best foot forward, not only to impress the board, but to get their point across, and hopefully that that's the person you, you take. Like you, I've seen both sides work, though. I've seen it work as a group, and I've seen it work individually. It's really the comfort of this board, what you feel best at. But that's just my opinion from being an observer. I didn't help you at all. I'm not sorry. at all. Not <laughs> even a little. Um. I mean, I guess if, if, if we did choose that everyone at once, it could sort of prepare them for what they're I, I think they're all very different in their own rights, just from what I've read on paper. So I sort of think it might be, um, it might add more depth to the process. Right. Being transparent board, the other reason that I thought this would work, and I bet you may agree or disagree with this, because you and I have had this conversation before, was that um, given the circumstances, Mr. Frank Hauser also recommended that, that the video is available to be streamed, that the meetings are, he recommended that we don't, he recommended that we stay consistent during this time period and make the meeting available to the public if they wish to see it. Well, yes. it's, it's already a public meeting. I know, but he was saying because of that, because of what we've been doing with live streaming the meetings, that that continues 
in this time when we talked about that we have the option to or not to live stream meetings to our discretion. But he recommended because of the season that we're in and everything that's going on that we continue to live stream the meetings. And one of the concerns that Idet and I had had before about live streaming the interviews of board members was that the others could watch the other. And well, the difference being if they're all in the building at the same time. That's how we gave them well, that. So, and so one of the things when I brought that up to Mr. Frankhauser, one of the things he suggested was the way, the way to avoid them from judging each other or judging each other's answers was having them also all in the room together. Well, that makes sense. And then they couldn't base their, they couldn't necessarily base their answer. Well, they, they would anyhow all in the room. Right, yeah. but it'll be different. Like if someone would say, right, they could right. take notes on what someone said and and maybe depending on our response or our reaction to that question or their answer, they may answer differently because they could see that ahead of time. Well, it's always been an open meeting. So right. anyone that was um, technically, you could say that anyone that was applying could have sat in the room and listened to the others. Right. But we always had that uh, uh, concern, that courtesy, where they waited in a separate room. Right. And I think we should do it that, again, you know, have them wait. But we weren't even there at the same time, were we? Mm -hmm. Well, they follow each other. Okay. It's one after the other. Yeah. But as I was leaving, I didn't see who was Yeah. But, uh, well, I, 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 I'm not going to, to beat this to death, but, you know, from what I've participated and seen, uh, I'd rather the time to see how they react with us than with each other. All right, well, okay, so then at this point in time, I'm gonna, we're gonna keep it the same way. Um, does seven o'clock work or should we start at 6.30 and go every half an hour from there? Does 6.30 work for everyone? I might be a couple minutes late, but I'll be there as close as I can. Yeah, I might be a couple minutes, but I can be there. All right. We can try to do that at 6.30. Um, that'd be great. So, Ms. Martin, can you I don't care in which order you do them, but 6.30 every half an hour. Um, we will probably be in the boardroom. Yeah, we'll probably be in the boardroom. It's an easier, it's an easier place to, to have a discussion like that. So any questions about that board? Anything else? All right. Any other board matters? <clears throat> All right, with that board, I will take a oh, motion. Sorry, oh. uh, have you given consideration to the VP position? The what? Vice President. Oh, I did not dis, uh, I wanted to talk about that some more. I wanted to investigate it some more, put it that way. Okay. All right. Um, with that board, I need a motion to adjourn to executive session for so legal and personal reasons. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed?